hey, you're having a glass of OJ with odd job. Um, don't have orange juice with me today, so I'm being a bad odd job. Um, but I wanted to talk about pen tests. Uh, I wanted to talk about what our industry does with that, both from a service provider uh, level as well as a customer level. Uh, a lot of you as customers probably know there's a lot of different things people mean when they say the word pen test. Uh, sometimes it's the dreaded, uh, they did a pen test, but all they gave me was a vulnerability scan. Um, you know, they gave me a pen test, but all they did was a gap assessment. Uh, they did a pen test and apparently it was an advanced adversary simulation and I wasn't expecting that. Um, it was a pen test, but really it was a red team engagement and they did physical stuff and that was out of scope. Um, you know, oh, it was just ethical hacking or, um, this was really just part of a security assessment. There's a lot of different understandings of what pen testing means, uh, and what that means for what a customer is going to get through the test and also after the test. Uh, so I wanted to talk about a few of those things, and a lot of them are legitimate. A lot of them are legitimate ways of working with customers. But again, from the service provider's perspective now, um, this is about setting the expectations for your customers and making sure that they understand what you are going to do and that they understand what they're going to get at the end of it as well as through the middle. From a customer's perspective, uh, it's also about you setting that expectation with your vendors of saying, here, this is what we mean by this. We want you to do these things. This is what we expect through it. This is what we expect after. Let's get it done. Uh, so let's let's so let's go through those things. Right. So there are many different reasons to get a pen test. And really, that is the first question as a customer you need to answer is why am I engaging a third party? for this assessment. Why am I doing this? So uh, a very basic reason, uh, two very basic reasons why companies and security directors will go get a pen test is uh, because it's a checkbox. You know, uh, our, our financial um, vendor, uh, your bank, I guess it's called, um, they want a pen test done every year. You've got to have a pen test every year. So guess what? We had a pen test. Check the box. Here's our thing. Here's the findings. We're going to work on the findings, blah, blah, blah. Cool. That was a pen test. We're done. Cool. It's done. It's it's treated like an audit almost uh, with the same kind of, oh, my gosh, we got to do the pen test. We got to get ready for the pen test. Uh, you know, we got to get ready and look pretty for the auditors um, rather than something that's actually thought out. It's just to get the compliance uh, people in your environment off your back. Um the other thing that some people get a pen test for is to scare the board or to scare the CEO or to scare whoever needs to be scared. You might be hearing my cat over there. I got a cat. Um, so scaring the board, scaring the CEO, scaring the powers that be into giving you money. That's also <laughs> for immature organizations. It is a very valid reason to go get a pen test to say, Hey, this is really the worst that can happen or one of the worst things that can happen. And it's that easy right now to do um, those. And it's because we don't have money. We don't have the support we need. We don't have whatever. Um, and so how do you handle that? There's a lot of good reasons to have one. A very good reason to have a pen test is to think, okay, how am I doing right now? How am I doing right now on my controls? Uh, so first of all, you actually have to know what your controls are, where your controls are. You have to know what you're actually trying to protect, right? Because in a pen test or in some type of simulation, you want to give the pen tester a goal to go towards. Um, so are you good at protecting that thing? You know, are you good at protecting uh, user accounts? Are you good at protecting uh, data, PII? Are you good at protecting IP? Um, so those are the types of things you want to do. Are you good at, contr are you good at detecting and controlling, um, um, ah, can't think of it. Are you good at detecting and controlling issues with your process, 
uh, with financial transactions. Can an attacker get in and uh, request a, a bunch of Bitcoin to go into their wallet instead of uh, wallets that you may do normal business with? Or transactions to the shell company that's going to be offloaded into some other bank and yada, 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 $230,000 later, uh, you've lost money, um, right? So are those processes, are because it's not even about technology necessarily, it's also about processes that can be circumvented or that can be hacked, live human processes can be hacked. Can those be hacked through the technology and through the avenues and vectors that we have here? Email is a great example, right? Social media is a good example. Um, so you have to answer the first question. Why am I getting a, uh, a pen test? And if you want to just scare the board, uh, talk to any, any uh, you know, good quality pen test uh, organization. And uh, they're going to be able to sufficiently vuln scan you, figure out what's in, and then do the worst. Uh, you can scope that a bit. I'd recommend scoping that a bit. I'd recommend saying, hey, don't take down my critical stuff. Don't take down this. Um, you know, but sure, fish all my users, fish this, fish that, uh, get the CEO's credentials, get in, change his email signatures, you know, whatever, um, to, to, to get the point across that, yes, this can happen. Um, obviously you don't want to do anything and you probably don't want to also, um, make your CEO or board members angry with you. Uh, because you might get a board or CEO that would end up getting angry with you for even doing a pen test or a fish test against people, um, uh, especially them. Uh, but a lot of them, if you do it correctly, will find it sobering and they'll say, okay, I get it. I, I see the problem. Um, this, this could, uh, this could go very bad. Um, if this was real. So let's talk about pen tests or security assessments or advanced ad adversary simulations for a mature organization. Okay, so you've already got your why. Hey, I want to assess my controls. I want to see if I'm doing a good job, what I need to improve on, right? So you want to do a lot of things. You want to be able to see uh, the initial vector. You want to see from the initial vector that you're walk watching for, you want to see, did I detect the initial vector? Did we prevent it maybe? Maybe you did, uh, but did we detect it? Okay, cool. Now adversary comes in. Along every single one of these controls that we have in the place along to their goal, are we stopping them or are we making it hard for them? Uh, but are we detecting this movement? Are we seeing this as a problem that needs to be solved? Um, and are our controls even doing anything? Uh, so those are so those are the things you want to do, right? So the first thing after you've determined why and after you've determined some of that is you want to you want to do some threat modeling. So obviously with threat modeling you have goals in mind and then you also have threat actors in mind. And in between the threat actor and the goals you have various vectors threat actor can use to get to the goal and then you put controls right there. Um, that is threat modeling that I like to see. Um, you can use pasta, you can use all these others, but those are very. Um, very much looking at dev environments uh, and developers rather than necessarily security minded uh, thinking. Um, and so with threat modeling doing this way, this is kind of my sex uh, attack path uh, that Wolf Gorlick and company uh, kind of came up with and uh, up at my sec. And uh, he did a lot of talks on this. And so this is kind of where I learned a threat model. Thanks Wolf. Um, so basically you have a target over here, you have an attacker over here, and they're going to come in, grab and walk out. So you've got to determine and figure out what vectors are there available right now to get to target. And you can start from edge to target, or you can start from target to those vectors seeing, okay, what are the ways that are most likely for a threat actor to happen? Okay, cool. So now we need to scope, right? We need to scope in the pen test to those vectors. You know, if your vector is email, uh, you do not want someone coming on site to uh, to get into a network closet and then drop a drop a sensor that then you know somehow gets a reverse shell and then this this. No, you don't want that. That's not the vector you're looking for. That's not actually what you're looking to mature right now. Um, and so you want to scope that in. Another part of scoping that you might want to consider as well, if you're mature enough for this, and I think you should be, is figure out and work with your pen test team, your company uh, that you're working with, your vendor, work with them to figure out, okay, what actual 
um, threat actors are interested in getting at me. What threat actors are going to come after me in my industry or, um, you know, based on what we do, hey, what are they going to do? Get them to identify a few and get to get to see and know how those threat actors work a bit and select one or two of them. You'll probably only get to select one and tell them, hey, I want you to use these methods to get in. I want to map this to tactics, techniques and procedures, TTPs. I want to see, am I able to stop these TTPs? Uh, instead of you just kind of Mickey Mousing and figuring out ways to get in here and Googling as hard as you can to get in through this vector, I would like to see if we're able to stop the threat actors who we would really like to, you know, to not happen. And again, this is for a mature organization. This is for someone who a Voln scan is going to show, hey, all the known Volns right now are closed. This is going to be a company that, um, which doesn't happen often, honestly. Um, but this is going to be a company who already has detection measures in place. They have EDR all over the place. They have uh, proper firewall segmentation. They have all of this stuff that uh, is going to be really hard on a gap assessment to get a finding on somebody. Um, so that's another thing maybe that the customer you ought to worry about too. Before you go and order a pen test, do your vuln scanning, do your patching, uh, get Get your get your CIS top five at least. Know your assets. Know your uh, programs. Control for those. Uh, do proper user um, and privilege access management. Uh, do your um, isolation of the network and um, work on those things. To re- and multi factor authentication would be a would be up there as well. But do those CS, CIS top five. Do basics before you start going and trying to uh, get somebody else in here. Uh, to uh, to blow everything wide open, really really hone this in. But get get tools in there that are going to do this. But as people are as these folks are coming in, they're going to be looking now for you know places where a more advanced adversary could get in. This is someone who's going to take their time. This is not going to be an eight hour engagement, right? This kind of pen test now is going to take a week or two weeks possibly to do, um, and so it's going to cost, but the amount of information you're going to get is important. So tip to the customer and also to the, um, to the vendor. So as a service provider, what you should really do um, and red teamers love being the secret, like, Ooh, they don't know what we're doing. Ooh, they have no idea. But really as a, as a, as a vendor, you're not trying to, um, you're not trying to destroy your customer. You're not trying to do the nefarious thing that the threat actors are trying to do to your customer. So you need to be thinking, how can I add value to the customer every step of the way? And one of the best things you can do to add value to a customer in the middle of a pen test is to involve the blue team through, through the pen test. Um, after all, these are the people you're trying to actually con- uh, test. Uh, you're trying to de- test the detection mechanisms. Let's say you have, you've, you've determined, you know, some of the things you're going to need to do to get to the data. And let's say you're a few steps in, you've already done initial, you're in, you've laterally moved. You think you're getting pretty close to your goal. Give a call to the blue team. Say, Hey, blue team, how are you doing? Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, This is Frank from the blue team. What, 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 what are you doing? Um, yeah. So, did you see anything funny at 12 in the morning on Tuesday? What do you mean funny? I don't know. Funny like uh, maybe that website, you know, handled a request it shouldn't have. Uh, okay. Maybe we ought to start looking there. Maybe I ought to start looking there. Hang up. Right. Give them hints to figure out, okay, they can't detect initial vector in. Oh, hey. And because they didn't detect that initial vector in, Maybe there were some alerts in the middle here that they lost because they didn't have good context for, okay, why, why was that bad? Um, that can easily happen. And so do that. Give hints to your blue team. Give hints to that because your customer is going to go, oh, hey, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. Um, because you're already ahead of them. You might get to the goal before they start realizing uh, where they're at. But what you do get is now you get an opportunity to see, okay, let's say in the middle of a breach or in the middle of a, an adversary uh, campaign, your blue team becomes aware, oh, hey, for one reason or another, we had an initial attack. Well, let's see what else that did. Oh, now we're seeing the breadcrumbs. Now we're starting to see where this is going. And uh, she's playing with my feet. Hi, baby. My kitty. 
So now you can start to see where they're heading and go, aha, I see they're going over there. By the way, keep your blue team oblivious that a pen test is going to happen. Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, sometimes you want that so that they're, you know, so that you can actually test for this. Sometimes you don't. If you're going to have red team giving blue team hints, um, make it a surprise. Make it to where they didn't know that this was going to be happening. Definitely don't tell them the date and time this is going to kick off. Um, but, and sometimes people say, hey, go ahead and let the blue team know. Let them be perfectly aware that it's going to happen. Uh, but then what you see sometimes is blue teamers just like looking because they already know the scope. They already know this. And they're just looking. They're like, ah, we caught you. Stop, 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 stop. And you kind of destroy the reason why you're even really doing the pen test, which is to see, can they, without actually being aware of what kind of thing is going to happen, uh, are they are they able to detect this? So it might be better to keep your blue team initially out of the know, your sock out of the know, and let that red team in, informing that tipster kind of stuff happening, let that filter in so that they become more aware as the attack uh, matures. So... Now they have exfiltrated out, they've got data, uh, and now it's like, okay, how fast can the blue team figure out, you know, how that happened? Or maybe the blue team got up to them. Maybe the blue team was able to catch up to them and uh, was able to cut that down. So there's a lot of things you can be testing in a pen test. You could be testing just your controls to see if it was preventing. You can see if they ever detected anything, and you can also see if your SOC was doing anything, whether your SOC is an MS or whether your SOC is on-prem you can do to see if they're paying attention and if they're capable of seeing this and if your use cases in your SIM or other things are bringing those alerts up and then how are they handling those alerts? Did you see tickets? Do a ticket review. Say, hey, let's see what tickets came up. This never came up. Okay, we need to tune our use cases. We need to do this. We need to do this. Um, and then have a postmortem and bring blue team in and don't shame blue team. Do not shame blue team. They are not there to be shamed because they didn't catch anything. This is why you do the test. It's an educational moment. It's a learning moment. We are all here to learn. Um, and, you know, sure, if they saw alerts galore when they were doing this and they just decided these were false positives. Um, yeah, even then, don't, don't, don't bash your blue team because of that. Just say, hey, okay, we really need to work on this. This is a bad finding and we need to improve to the next pen test. We really need to improve on this. And it gives you now a point in time that you can say, okay, here's our level set. Next time, do we get better? Did we do a better job of detecting this kind of thing? Um, and so you can do a postmortem and figure out, okay, what do we need to do? What are the findings? Do we need to develop our new, uh, new use cases for these types? Because again, if you've mapped this back to a threat actor, you might have TTPs, you might have methods that they've generated artifacts that you can start loading in to figure out, okay, if we see these things, this is most likely this threat actor, and uh, we can we can start going through this. Obviously, you want to try and be as general as possible without getting false positives. Kind of tough. But you also don't want to be specific as possible, because threat actors also sometimes think on the fly, especially if they're already in. They think a little bit on the fly. Um, getting in, they take a little bit more time to uh, figure you out, and uh, they see if the first few things work. Uh, and then if they don't, they kind of move on and say, okay, we're going to go somewhere else that is going to be quick. But if they're really interested in you, not just your industry, but you specifically, because you're, you're, you're at number five in the fortune 500 for your industry, um, then yeah, they're just going to come at you and they're going to take their time. So, uh, it's important to, it's important to take the time to scope this correctly. It's important to answer the question of why it's important to threat model appropriately. Um, and work with your MS, uh, work with your, uh, your third party tech pen tester, work with them to figure this out. Um, but then pen tests, why not have your own red team? And then you won't have to pay for pen tests galore every single year. You won't have to wait till the next year to do pen testing. You could have threat modeling going on for days and then tests on that for days from your red team. And they could be testing these controls constantly to see if blue team is noting this. You can make this a fox hunt that happens every month and you could plan for this every month and you could do this every month and you could throw new things in there. Though. Oh, are we seeing this? Uh, are we seeing this and change it up? You, your red team is going to become, should be, able to become very creative in throwing the blue team off, just like a real attacker. 
Um, but yes, it is good to bring that outside firm in, fresh minds, new people, new perspective every year to really do a humdinger of a pen test, to really get in there and really put on, uh, pull out all the stops to figure out what can be done um, in your environment and what what would be done, not just what can be done. Sure, we can we can bring dynamite and blow up your uh, blow up your ICS environment. We can bring a tank down that will run right over that eight foot fence with three strands of razor wire as CISSP recommends. We can bring that on down and get into your environment. Um, but is that what will be done? No. A drone might fly right over that though. So that might be done. Um, but anyway, uh, this is going on for 20 minutes now. And I just wanted to get this out there to talk about the different kinds of pen tests from a customer perspective and from a service provider perspective. How do you get value out of your vendors? How as a vendor do you get value to your customer from what you're doing? Um, we have to meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, you'll notice a lot of these videos, I guess, have to do with talking with vendors and talking with the customers from both sides to try and help us both because uh, we need to bridge these gaps, um, both so that the vendors make their money, right? Uh, but so the customers actually get their value and uh, so that they actually can improve their uh, environments, which is their profit that they get. Um, anyway, that's been a glass of OJ. I think the glass is about empty now, uh, even though I got no glass in my hand. So, uh, uh, just a, just a little talk about pen tests. Still trying to figure out how to end these, but uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend.